Welcome back to the first Week in Review of 2019. To celebrate, I'm running a giveaway for a $10 Star Citizen gift card. You can find all the info on that at the end of the video. It's been a quiet few weeks over the holiday, but I've got plenty to update you on now that CRG has returned to focus on 3.5, so let's get started. So at number 5 we start with the 3.4.2 update. Another wave of updates hits the PTU this week, with 3.4.2 joining the 1.1 launcher update. The launcher adds a couple of new features, with the patcher now verifying the integrity of all files, a new context menu being available for toggling sound, logging out and accessing the website from the system tray, better logging and stability, and my personal favourite, the capture being available direct from the launcher. 342 is a similarly light release, with CIG adjusting quantum travel overhead and cooldown timers, adding a few audio effects for the mining arm, and fixing a few bugs, such as the broken QT HUD when leaving the seat, random canopy opening, and missions failing to spawn correctly. It's primarily a bug fixing release, but I don't think any citizen will complain at the improved quality of life. At number 4, we have the roadmap update. Two updates hit the roadmap this week, with both Star Citizen and Squadron 42 receiving an update after a quiet Christmas period. We'll start with Star Citizen, and look at how the 3.5 roadmap is progressing. 219 new tasks were added to the roadmap since our last update, with CIG beginning to flesh out the features. We saw an overall 2% improvement, taking us up to 47% overall, but there are a number of tasks still to be started. Big winners include performance optimization gaining 50%, area 18 gaining 31%, and the projectile manager gaining 13. Some tasks lost progress, with the previously complete Arc Corp Moon Waller being reduced to just 20%, and Lyria moving from 89% to 62 in a 27% loss. It can only be assumed that CRG decided they wanted to take these a step further than originally planned and are now working to catch up. DNA face customization lost 1%, but otherwise progress remains good. There are still 11 tasks waiting to be started, but now we're into the new year, we should see these kick off shortly. 3.6 remains exactly the same, so there's not much to say. It remains at 6%, with only 3 of its tasks started, but it may get reorganised as CRG assesses their goals for the year towards the end of January. Squadron 42's roadmap also updates this week, bringing Q4 2018 plans to 100% completion. That moves us on to the roadmap for Q1 2019, which sees an overall minus 2% progress. Only the new atmospheric flight model gained progress, adding 7%, with vehicle scanning losing 3, player carry pulls V2 losing 4, and player jump V2 losing 8%. The remainder of the tasks stayed the same, and that leaves us at 57% total this week. A quick look ahead shows no progress for Q2, though we wouldn't expect it this early on. Signs are looking good so far for CIG to keep their planned release dates. At number 3 we have lore content. Two more lore posts appeared this week, with the first being our portfolio piece on the Atoni group. As one of the most enduring criminal organisations in human space, they're still relatively unknown in the verse, with much of their wealth and influence still undiscovered. You can read an analysis of their practices and history over on the RSI website. The second post is a subscriber-only look at the Cabal system. The system was discovered, or rather rediscovered, in 2941, and is home to three planets. Much of the information about the system is confidential, and you can check out the post on the RSI website to find out why. At number 2 we have Around the Verse. This week's ATV gives us a look at some further developments from the last couple of weeks, focusing on audio and internal tools. New sounds were captured for in-game props, and sounds that will be later mixed for ships, vibrational sounds, etc. CRG does this with a Foley technique, recording real sounds and placing them in the game. Further tweaks are being made to the flight control system following feedback from players at CitizenCon. It's approaching completion, and we're due to see it release in 3.5. Procedural tools continue to be developed further, with improvements to rest-stop generation tools. 
The tool allows stations to be generated automatically, and the artist can tweak individual parts of the station, such as branding, props, etc. The toolkit is being built to be as easy as possible for the designers, and it's becoming flexible enough to be useful for more than just stations. The tool is being built out to allow it to generate larger stations, becoming better at doing vertical slices alongside the horizontal levels. This is allowing for some very large rest stops indeed. It's currently being tested on HABs, with props being tailored to the occupant. This allows large numbers of HABs to be generated at just the press of a button. A new tool is being built by COG to allow data to be decoupled between Squadron 42 and Star Citizen. This tool will allow COG to only include assets needed for a particular release at the press of a button, rather than detangling huge amounts of resources for every build like they currently do. Another new tool is being built, but this time for players. A 3D local area map is being built to allow players to see the space they're currently in, represented as a 3D map that can be browsed. In the current version, you can see the current building you're in, browse between floors and around the whole building, and even enemies and their locations. It's still very early stage, and COG wants to change the graphical style before it releases, but we can see the early stages of it now. And that's all for ATV this week. No RTV this week, as Jared remains on holiday, but we should see him return in a couple of weeks' time. And finally, at number one, we have the community overview. A relatively quiet holiday period this year, with the biggest highlights being a bug that allows you to load ships with more weapons than are designed to fit. As such, we've seen Avengers with huge repeaters, arrows with way more weapons than should fit on the hardpoints, and other crazy combinations. That's all from me for this week. If you want to get involved in the giveaway, you can follow the link in the video description to be in with your chance of winning. The draw will be made at the beginning of February, and the winner announced then. As always, like if you liked it, get subscribed, and leave me a comment. I'll see you in next week's episode of Week in Review.